spare Hippolyta, our nuptial hour draws on apace. Four happy days bring in another moon. But oh, methinks how slow this old moon wanes. She lingers my desires, like to a step dame or a dowager, long withering out a young man's revenue. Four days shall quickly steep themselves in night. Illustrate, stir up the Athenian youth to merriment. Awake the pert and nimble spirit of birth. Turn melancholy forth to funerals. The pale companion is not for our pomp. Hippolyta, I woo thee with my sword, and won thy love doing the injuries. But I will wed thee in another key, with pomp, with triumph, and with reveling. Happy me, please, here. I'll read now the What's the news with thee? Uh, full of vexation come I against my child, my, my daughter Hermia. <laughs> Stand forth, Demetrius. My noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander. And my gracious duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou Lysander, with cunning, thou hast filched my daughter's heart, turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn arsonist. Therefore, be it so, she will not hear, before your grace, consent to marry you to Demetrius. I beg the ancient privilege of act. As she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall either be to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. In himself he is. But in this kind, wanting of your father's voice, the other must be held the worthier. I would my father look but with my eyes. Rather your eyes must with his judgment look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I do not know by what power I may go, nor how I may concern my modesty. In such a presence here to plead my thoughts, but I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may be me in this case, if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death, or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires, whether if you yield not to your father's choice, you can endure the livery of a nun. For I to be in shady cloister mute, to live a barren sister all your life, chanting faint hymns to the cold, fruitless moon. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord, ere I will my virgin Panna. Unto his lordship, whose unwished role, my soul consents not to give sovereignty. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermias. Do you bear him? Scornful like said. It's true. He hath my love, and what is mine, my love will render him, and she is mine. And all my right of her, I do a state unto Demetrius. I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love is more than his, my fortunes every way. As fairly right, if not with vantage, as Demetrius. And which is more than all these books can be? I am the love of the Indian Hermia. Why shouldn't I then prosecute my right? Demetrius, <laughs> I'll about to do that. Made love to Nadar's daughter, Helena, and won her soul. And she, sweet lady, don't. Thou we don't! Those are idolatry! 
It's not in a constant hand. I must confess that I have heard so much, and Dimitri is thought to have spoke thereof. But being overfull of self-desires, my mind did lose it. But Demetrius, come, and come, Aegeus, I have some private schooling for you both. For you, fair Hermia, look you arm yourself to fit the fancies of your father's will, or else the law of Athens yields you up, which by no means we may extenuate to death or to a vow of single life. Let us, sweet Hermia, yield to thy senator your praised title to my certain right.
the watering glass, decking with liquid pearl the bladed grass. At a time that lover's flight still doth conceal through Athens gates, we have devices steel. The clock main primrose beds for months alive, emptying our bosoms of their counsel sweet. There my Lysander and myself shall meet, and thence from turn away our eyes, and to seek new friends and stranger companies. Farewell, sweet play fellow, pray thou for us, and the luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Be firm, my Sander, we must starve our sight from lover's food till tomorrow deep midnight. I will, my Hermia. Helena, adieu. As you want to him, Demetrius, dote on you. How happy some more some could be. Through Athens I am thought as fair as she. But what of this? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all but he do know. And he errs doting on Maria's eye. So I admired of his qualities. But what's not with the eyes, but with the mind? And therefore is being too tame and blind? For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eye, when he hailed them oaths that he was only mine. And when this hail came he from Hermia felt, so he dissolved and showers of oaths did melt. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight, and to the woods he will tomorrow night pursue her and for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it's at a dear expense. But here in mean I to enrich my pain, to have the sight thither and back again. Well, I company here. You were best to call him generally, man by man, according to the script. Uh, here's the scroll. Every man thinks <laughs> what you stop, fit. Do all that. Let's play. Draw an instrument for the Duke and Duchess on his wedding day. Peters! Say what the play treats on, then read the names of the actors, and so grow to a point. Well, Mary, our play is most laughable comedy and most cool death of Mr. Disney. A very good piece of work, I assure you. And a Mary. Now, good Peter Quince, call forth your actors by the scroll. Masters, spread yourselves. Answer as I call it. Nick Bottom, who are you? Ready. Name the parts I am for. Nick Bottom, who I set down for Pyramus. Ah, uh, what is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? A lover. That will cause some tears and end in the true performing. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms. I will condole in some measure. Yet my humor is much more for a tyrant. I can play Hercules rarely. To tear a cat in, to make all split. Now, name the rest of the players. Red split. Here is Manda. Here is Prince. Who are set down for this meeting? What is this, Disney? A wandering knight? The lady that fearless was love. Nay, they not let me play a woman. I fear coming. That's all one. You played it a mess. Speaking of smell, as you will. Let me play Disney too. I will speak in a monstrous of little voice. Disney, I feel Miss Lover Drew. And I, Disney, Lady Drew, and Lover Drew. No, no. Very dangerous. You must play fear, Miss. Blue, you, Disney. Well, proceed. Tommy Snap, the taker. Yeah! Here, yeah, Pyramus, yeah. friend! You? Here, Mrs. Bob. Myself, Disney's father. Snug. Coin it. Huh? You? Lion's Park. Yeah. Hope it's a play well fitting. <laughs> Have you the Lion's Park, Richard? Pray you be and give it to me, for I am so sorry. You may do an exemplatory. Nothing but roaring. Oh, hey! Let me play the lion too. I will roar that any man's good heart to hear. I will roar that thy do shall say. Let him roar again. Let him roar again. And should you do it too terrible, we find the duchess and the lady. Now we're enough to hang us all. That would hang us every mother's son. I grant you, friends, if you should fright the ladies out their wits, that will give them no more discretion but to hang us. But I will aggravate, so I will roar you as gently as a sucking dove. I will roar you into there at any nightingale. Roar! You can play no part of 
Marco Pyramus. Pyramus is a sweet faced man. Ah, a proper man. One to see in a summer's day. A I lovely, mean, gentleman like man. Therefore, you need to play Pyramus. Well, I will undertake it. What band were I best to play it in? Why? Who will you? Well, I was thinking either your straw beard, your orange tawny beard, no. your purpling green, no, no. your French colored crown beard, your perfect yellow. Some of your French crowns have no hair at all. You should play Fairfax, the masters. Here you are. I've been treated. Sorry. Please come by tomorrow night. Be in the palace with Tomorrow without death. Then, we will rehearse by moonlight. The brave masters fail me not. We will meet, and there we may rehearse most unseemly and courageously. Take pains, be perfect. Adieu. Adieu so for me. Enough. Hold her cut bow strings. Come with us, and you will see a forest of great antiquity. Only a dollar it shall cost, or through the forest you be lost. Come on, shoot! <laughs> shoot! Shoot! Thank you. What? You're like, <laughs> we should do that, we should do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thou can so play a lion. <laughs> How now, spirit? Whither wander you? Over hill, over dale, to brush. Briar, over park, over pale, to flood, to fire. I do wander everywhere, swifter than the moon's sphere, and I serve the fairest queen. To do her orbs upon the green, her cow slips tall with pension speed, in their gold coat spots you see. But those be rubies, fairy favors. In the freckles are their sabers. I must go find some dew drops here and hang a pearl on every cowslip's ear. Farewell, you lotus spirits, I'll be gone. The queen and all her elves have come on. The king doth keep his revels here tonight. Take heed the queen come not within its sight, for Oberon is passing. Bell and Rag, because she is her attendant, hath a lovely boy. <coughs> Stolen from an Indian king. She never had so sweet a changeling. And jealous Oberon would have the child, knight of his train, to trace the forest wild. But she perforce withholds the loved boy, crowns him in flowers, and makes him all her joy. And now they never meet in Grove of Green, by fountain clear or spangled starlight sheen. But they do swear that all the elves, for fear, creep into acorn cups and hide them there. <laughs> <laughs> Either I be mistaken your shape and make me tight, or else you are that shrewd and neighbor sprite they call Robin Goodfellow. Are not you he who frights the maids of the bellatry? Those that hobgoblin call you and sweet Puck. You do their work. And they have good luck? Are not you he? <coughs> Thou speakest aright. I am that merry wanderer of the night. I jest to Oberon and make him smile when I at that bean fed horse beguile. Nay, in likeness of a filly fowl, but room fairy. Here comes Oberon. Ah, <laughs> oh, so my mistress, so would that he were gone. Ill met by the moonlight, proud Titania. 
what, jealous Oberon? Berries, skip hence. I have forsworn his bed and company. Terry, rash wanton, am I not thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. Why art thou here come from the farthest step of India? But that forsooth. The bouncing Amazon, <laughs> your buckskin mistress and warrior love, to Theseus must be wedded, and you come to give their bed joy and prosperity. Oh, how canst thou thus for shame, Titania? Glance upon my credit <laughs> with Apolita, knowing that I know that thou dost love Theseus. Oh, didst thou not lead him through the glimmering nights away from Perithia, whom he ravaged? <laughs> and didst thou not make with him fair plea, break his faith with Aradine and Antiopa? These are the forgeries of jealousy. <laughs> and never since middle summer spring met we in hill or dale, in forest or mead, by page fountain or rushy brook, or in the beached margins of the sea to dance our ringlets with a whistling wind. But with thy brawls thou hast disturbed our sport. And therefore the moon, the governess of floods, pale in her anger, washes all the air that rheumatic diseases do abound. And thorough this distemperature, we see the seasons alter. The spring, summer, childing, autumn, angry winter change their wanted liveries. And the mazed world, by their increase, Knows not which is which. And this same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissensions. We are their parents and original. Do you not amend it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg thee a small <coughs> changeling child to be my henchman. <laughs> Set your heart at rest. The fairy land buys not the child of me. His mother was a votress of my order. Oh. Full often has she gossiped by my side and sat with me on Neptune's oh. yellow sands and grew big bellied with a wanton wind, her womb then rich with my young squire. But she, <sighs> mortal, of that boy did die. And for her sake, I rear up her boy. And for her sake, I will not part with him. How long in these woods intend you stay? <coughs> Perchance, till after Theseus's wedding day, if you will patiently dance well around and see our moonlight revels, go with us. If not, shun me, and I will spare your haunts. Give me the child, and I will go with thee. Love shaft smartly as it should pierce a hundred thousand hearts. But marked I, marked I, where that golden cupid fell, it fell upon a little western flower, once white, now purple with love's wound. And the maidens call it love in idleness. <laughs> Fetch me this flower. The herb I showed thee once, when laid across sleeping eyelids, will cause, or man or woman, to madly dote upon the next living creature it sees. 
Fetch me this flower and be back here, ere the Leviathan tents with the lead. I'll put a girdle round about the earth in 40 minutes. <laughs> 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 Having once this flower, I'll watch Titania when she is asleep, and then I'll streak her eyes with the liquor, and then the next living thing she waking looks upon, be it wolf, bear, lion, boar, bull, meddling monkey, our busy ape, she must pursue it with the soul of love. <laughs> and here I take this charm off of her sides, as I can with another herb. I'll make her render her page to me. Oh, but who comes here? I will observe them, for I am the invisible! I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? Thou toldst me thy were stolen into this wood, and here am I woed within this wood, because I cannot meet my Hermia. Hence get thee gone, follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant, but yet you draw not irons, for my heart is as true as steel. Leave you your power to draw, but I shall have no power but to follow you. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not in plainest truth tell you I do not, nor I cannot love thee? And even for that do I love you the more. I am your spaniel, and Demetrius, the more you beat me, I will fawn on you. Use me but as your spaniel. Spurn me, strike me, neglect me. <laughs> Only give me leave. Unworthy as I am to love you, what worse your place can I beg in your love? And yet, a place of high respect with me to be used as you use your dog. <laughs> Tempt me not too much, the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I look on thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. <laughs> You do impeach your modesty too much. To leave the city and commit yourself into the hands of one who loves you not? Your virtue is my privilege. And for that, I think it is not night when I do see your face. Therefore, I think I am not in the night. For the woods lack worlds of company. And you and my respect are all the world. Then how can it be said I am alone? When all the world is here to look on me. <coughs> I'll run from thee and hide in the brakes. And leave thee to the wild beasts. The wildest hath not such a heart as you. Run when you will, the story shall be changed. <laughs> I will not stay thy questions. Let me go. If thou follow me, do not believe I shall do thee mischief in this wood. I, in the town, in the temple, in the field, you do me mischief. By Demetrius, your wrongs do set scandal on my sex. We cannot fight for love as men may do. We should be wooed and we're not mean to woo. I'll follow thee and make a heaven of hell to die upon the hand I love so well. Very well, nymph. Ere he should fly from this grove, thou shalt fly from him, and he shall seek thy love. Ha <laughs> ha. Ah! Welcome, wonder. Hast thou the flower there? Aye. Here it is. Ah, see. Ahem! I pray thee, give it to me. <laughs> I know a place when the wild pine blows, where ox lips and the wild violets grow. Quite over canopy with luscious woodbine, musk rose and elegantine. There sleeps Titania some time of the night, lulled into her sleep with dances and delights. <laughs> there the snake throws her enameled skin with weeds wide enough to wrap the fairy in. <sighs> and with this, I'll speak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. <laughs> ah, but take thou some of this and seek through the grove, for a sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth anoint his eyes. But do it when the next thing he espies may be the woman, thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments that he hath on. <laughs> Do this and take such care as he may prove more fond of her than her upon her love. <laughs> oh, do it, and be back here the first cock crow. Fear not, my lord, your servant shall do so. <laughs> <laughs> Come now, a roundel and a fairy 
song. Sing me asleep, then to your offices and let me rest. Something's near when thou wakest, it is thy dear. Awake when something vile's near. <laughs> Fair love, you faint with wandering in the woods. Hands be drawn, I forgot our way. Hmm. Let us rest us here, Hermia, if you think it good. And tarry for the comfort of the day. Be it so, Lysander, find you out of bed, for I upon this bank will rest my head. One turf shall serve as pillow for us both. So then, one heart, one bed, two bosoms, and one trough. Nay, good Lysander, for my sake, my dear, lie further off yet, do not lie so near. Oh, take the sense sweet of my innocence. Love takes me in love's conference. I mean, my heart's been to yours, isn't it? So then, one heart we can make of it. One, two bosoms that are chained with a single look. So then, two bosoms and her single trough. But, for by your side, no bedroom, me deny, for lying so, Hermia. I do not lie. I stand her riddles very prettily. Now much be sure my manners than my pride, if Hermia meant to say I stand her lie. But, gentle friend, for love and courtesy, lie further off. In human modesty, such separation as may well be said becomes a virtuous bachelor and a maid. Amen. So far be distant, and good night, sweet friend. Thy love ne'er alter till thy sweet life end. Amen. To that fair prayer say I, and end life when I am loyalty. Here is my bed. Sleep, give thee all his rest. With half thy wish. The wisher's eyes be pressed. Through the forest I have gone, but Athenian found I none. On whose eyes I might approve this flower's force and stirring love. Night and silence. But who is here? Weeds of Athens he does wear. This is he, my master said, despise the Athenian maid, and hear the maiden, sleeping sound on the dank and dirty ground. Pretty soul, she durst not lie near this lack love, this kill courtesy. <laughs> Churl upon thine eyes I throw all the power this charm doth owe. When thou wakest, let love forbid. Sleep his seat on thine eyelid. So awake when I am gone! <laughs> For I must now to Oberon. Say <laughs> thou, thou kill me, sweet Demetrius. I charge thee hence, and then do not haunt me thus. What thou art leave, leave me, do not so. Stay on thy peril, I alone will go. Oh, I am out of 
breath in this fond chase. The more my prayers, the lesser is my grace. Happy is Hermia, wheresoever she lies, for she hath blessed and attractive eyes. How came her eyes so bright? Not with salt tears. If so, mine are oftener washed than hers. But who is here? Lysander, on the ground, dead, or asleep? I see no blood, no wound. <laughs> Lysander, if you live, good sir, awake. For thy sweet sake, transparent Helena, nature shows art that through thy bosom makes me see thy heart. Where is Demetrius? Oh, how fit a word is that vile name to perish on my sword? Do not say so, Lysander, say not so. What though he loves your Hermia, Lord? What though? And yet Hermia loves you still, then be content. Content with Hermia? No, I do repent the tedious minutes with her I have spent. Not Hermia, but Helena I love, who would not trade a raven or a dove. The will of man is by his reason swayed, and reason says, you are the worthy maid. <laughs> Wherefore was I to this king mockery born? When at your hands did I deserve this scorn? Is it not enough, is it not enough, young man, that I can never, no, nor never can, deserve a sweet look from Demetrius's eye? But you must flout my insufficiency. Good drop, you do me wrong, good sooth, you do. But in a disdainful manner, me to woo. But fare ye well, I perforce, I must confess, I thought you, Lord, of more true gentleness. All that a lady of one man's refuse should of another therefore be abused. She sees not Hermia. Hermia sleepeth out there, and never may have stopped from Lysander near. Or is it? Sir, fit of the sweetest things, the deepest loathing the stomach brings. Or as tied heresies that men do leave are hidden most by those they did deceive. So thou, my serpent, my heresy, be of all hated but most by me. And with all my power, address your love and might to honor Helen and to be her knight. Help me, Lysander, help me, do thy best to pluck this crawling serpent from my breast. I me, mean, for pity, what a dream was here. Lysander, look how I do quake with fear. Me thought a serpent in my heart away, and you sat smiling at his cruel prey. Lysander, what? Removed? Lysander? Lord? What? Out of hearing? Gone? No sound, no word? Alack, where are you? Speak, and if you hear, speak of all loves, soon almost with fear. No? Then I well perceive you are not nigh. Either death or you I'll find immediately. Are we all met? Fair, <laughs> fair. Marvelous convenient place for our rehearsal. Screen plot, be on stage. This hardcore ring, ah, our touring house. We'll do it in action, huh? as we do it before the Duke. Peter Quince. Huh. What sayest thou, Bully Bottom? There are things to this comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that cannot abide. First, Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself. Wish some. Which the ladies cannot abide. Helen! But I like him. What a perilous fear. Mm. 
I feared that we must leave all the killing out when all is done. Not a whit. I had a device to make all well. Write me a prologue, and let the prologue seem to say we'll do no harm with our swords, and tell them that I, Pyramus, am not killed in thee. And for thy better insurance, tell them that I, Pyramus, am not truly Pyramus, but yet bottom, the weaver. This will put them out of fear. Well, we don't have such a prologue. You should be written in eight and six. No, 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 no. Make it two more. Make it eight and eight. Would the ladies not be uh, afeard of a lion? I fear it. I promise you. Masters, you ought to discourse wonders to yourselves to bring in. God shield us. A lion amongst ladies is a much more dreadful thing, and there is nothing more fearful and wildful than your lion living, and we ought to look to it. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Well, it shall be so. But there are two odd things. That is to bring moonlight into a chamber. Or you know, Peter Miss and Thisby did me by moonlight. Oh. Doth the moon shine tonight we play or play? A calendar. A calendar. Oh. Look at the almanac. Find out moonshine. Find out moonshine. Yes, yes, doth shine that night. Then you should bring in a casement in at the great chamber window where we will play. And the moon may shine in at the casement. Uh, or else one must come in with a bush of thorns. The lanthorn, he says he comes to disfigure, or to present the person of moonshine. But there is another thing. We must have a great wall in the main chamber. For you know, Hermes and Thisbe did talk to the wall. You can never bring in a wall. What say you, Bottom? Some man or other must present wall. <laughs> <laughs> and let him have some rough plaster, or some rough loam, or some rough cost to signify wall, and let him hold his fingers thus through the cranny, so that Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. Yeah. That may be then all as well. But come, say every mother's son, rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you begin. When you've spoken your speech, enter the brain. To everyone, according to his cheer. <laughs> what happened, home sons, have we swaggering here? <laughs> so near the cradle of the fairy queen. What? A play toward! I'll be an auditor. Oh. An actor too, perhaps, <laughs> if I see cause. <laughs> Speak fair, Miss Thisbe. Stand for it. <clears throat> Thisbe, thy flowers of odious savor sweet. Odors, odors. Odors, savor sweet. <laughs> so hot thy breath, my dearest Thisbe, dear. But hark, a voice, stay thou but here a while, and by and by I will to thee appear. Stranger Pyramus that e'er played here. Ugh. Must I speak now? Ah, no, you must. We must understand. He comes to hear noisy heard, but is returned again. Hey. Most radiant Pyramus, most holy white of who, of color like the red rose of Triumph Briar, most brisky juvenile in heek. Most oh. lovely Jew, as true as truest horse, that he hath will never tire. I will meet thee, Pyramus, at Minnie's tomb. Nine is two. Man, why? You must not speak that yet. That, you answer to Pyramus. <gasps> Pyramus, in a oh. tooth pass, it's never tired. Ah. Oh, as true as truest horse, that he hath will never tire. If I were fair, Thisbe, I would call me thine. Oh, I'll follow you. I'll lead you back around. Through bog, through brush, through brake, through briar. Sometimes a horse I'll be. Sometimes I don't wear. Sometimes a headless bear. Sometimes a fire. And neigh and bark. Grunt. Roar and burn like horse, hound, hog, bear, fire, and every turn. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they run away? This is knavery of them to make me a fear. <laughs> oh, bottom, thou art changed. What do I see on thee? What do you see? You see an asset of your own, do you? <laughs> Bless the big bottom, bless the horse, I, I see their knavery. This is to make an ass of me, to fright me, to stir me if they could. But I will not be afraid. I will walk up and down. 
I will sing. That will show I am not afraid. The Oswald cock so black of hue with orange tawny veil. The thrustle with his note so true, then with little quill. What angel wakes me from my flowery bed? <laughs> the finch, the sparrow, and the lark, the plain song, cuckoo, gray, whose note full many mandled mark, and dares not answer nay. For indeed, who would set his wit to so foolish a bird? Who would give the bird a light, though he cried, cuckoo, never so? I pray thee, mortal, sing again. My ear is much enamored of thy note. So is mine eye enthralled to thy shape, and thy fair virtue's force. For force doth move me on the first view to say, to swear, I love thee. <laughs> Methinks, mistress, you shall have little reason for that. And, to say the truth, reason and love keep little company together nowadays. The more the pity that some honest neighbors will not make them friends. Nay, I can gleek upon occasion. Thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. But not so neither. If I had enough wit to get out of this wood, I'd have enough to serve mine own turn. Out of this wood? Do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here, whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit of no common rate. The summer still doth tend upon my state. <laughs> and I do love thee. Therefore go with me, and I will give thee fairies to attend on thee. And they shall fetch thee jewels from the deep, and sing while thou on pressed flowers dost sleep. And I will purge thy mortal grossness, so that thou shalt like an airy spirit go. Peace blossom, cobweb, moth, and mustard seed. Ready? And I. And I. And I. Where shall we go? Be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Hop in his walks and gamble in his eyes. Feed him with apricots and dewberries, with purple grapes, green figs, and mulberries. The honey bags steal from the humblebees <coughs> to have my love to bed and to arise. And pluck the wings from painted butterflies to fan the moonbeams from his sleeping eyes. Nod to a mouse and do it courtesies. Hail, mortal. Hail, hail, hail. I cry your worship's mercy heartily. I beseech your worship's name. Cobweb. Good master Cobweb, I I'll make a more acquaintance with you. If I cut my finger, I shall make bold with you. Your name, I beseech you, mistress. Peas Blossom. Peas Blossom. Command me to Mistress Squash, your mother, or to Master Peacock, your father. I pray you, I shall make much more of acquaintance with you. But you, I pray you, sir. Mustard Seed. Good Master Mustard Seed. I know that same patience well. That same cowardly giant like ox beef hath devoured many a gentleman of your house. I pray your kindred had made my eyes water air now. I shall desire of you much more acquaintance. Um, lead him to my bower. The moon, methinks, looks with a watery eye. And when she weeps, Weeps every little flower, lamenting some enforced chastity. Ah! <laughs> Shh! Tie up my love's tongue and bring him silently. <laughs> <laughs>